Hello lovelies! Welcome to part 3 of my pop culture magic video series. This video has kind of been a while coming because I'm still trying to find my footing and my style. In this video I'm trying a different approach. I found my videos felt very scripted and it was hard to maintain a more casual feel. So what I'm going to do instead is heavily script the video and have that here to work through because I feel like this format may be better to convey the ideas I want to in a more eloquent way without me having to worry about how I look or my body language or anything like that. Also, because I'm going to be using some quotation in this video, I thought having that on screen would be better than watching me read it off of a page. In this part of the video series though, I'm going to look at the nature of pop culture magic spirits and familiars. I had originally planned to do this series all as one video, then as three, but as I'm going through them, I'm finding more and more things that I want to talk on. I feel like to be able to get into this in a you know deep way, I do also need to explain my personal position. From my experience, the spirits that magicians work with are external, independent entities with their own ideas and intentions, a paradigm commonly referred to as the spirit model. For a long time I worked from a psychological model, but the more and more I worked with these entities, the clearer it became to me that this wasn't an entirely internal phenomenon. The spirits were real and honestly were fucking my shit up. I think it's experiences like this that tend to lead people to the same conclusion I reached, that these entities are not just imaginal, but were living, breathing entities with their own reasons for interacting with humans. Naturally I understand completely that not everybody is going to be on board with my opinion, and I can certainly occupy other paradigms to engage in discussions on these topics, but ultimately what I'm putting forward is what I've come to understand at this stage. I want to read you an excerpt from Donald Tyson's book, Familiar Spirits, A Practical Guide for Witches and Magicians. He says, when we send out a summons to a spirit based on their function we wish it to accomplish, the most appropriate spirit to fit our requirement will come forth from the infinite number of potential spiritual beings. When we apply a name to that spirit, it will accept the name as its own because the name arises from the function, and the function is the identity of the spirit. When we visualize a body for that spirit, it will similarly accept the body image as its own because the image is also extracted from the function. He then goes on to say, The spirits we are familiar with, such as Archangel Raphael, have acquired a form through long association with human beings, but a newly called spirit will accept the form supplied by the magician who calls it, provided that form is symbolically suited to the spirit. In this section of the book, Tyson was outlining the Golden Dawn method of what we might call idolonics, that is the creation of a spirit. More fitting though may be to call this the realization of a spirit. In as far as I can tell, this or something very similar may be what's going on when a pop culture magician conjures a pop culture f familiar. Now keep in mind when I say familiar spirit, I am referring to literally any spirit a magician works with, from a god to a servant. I think a good thought experiment as well is to consider at what point these spirits come into being. Ultimately, this is something unimportant when it comes to operative magic because, to quote Donald Tyson again, this time from ritual magic, what it is and how to do it, he states while defining magic that magic is unbounded by space and time. He offers the story of Alistair Crowley, who, who cast a working to make someone contact him. The next day a letter arrived. Naturally, the letter must have been sent before the working, but the working was an integral part of making that reality manifest. So a spirit conjured tomorrow for the very first time can simultaneously be thousands of years old if required because spirits inherently have a retroactive quality. Now I do also enjoy a good conspiracy theory, so I wanted to throw out some other fun options or points of view to chew on. Now you can read Cinema Symbolism by Robert Sullivan to get an idea of just how rampant the use of occult and esoteric symbolism is in modern film. Uh, occult themes and sigils are littered through Japan's anime industry as well. So much of the pop culture we consume is inspired by and incorporates magical ideas that I can't help but wonder if perhaps it is the creators of this content who might be bringing these entities into existence, whether intentionally or not, through the incorporation of these powerful symbols. Another idea is that the creators of this content could be drawing from an infinite parallel universe and are actually prophets channeling these things that have actually happened and putting them forward in a way we can consume them. And of course we have to acknowledge the possibility that the pop culture entities we're working with 
might be drawing their life force from an existing spirit or is actually a known spirit in the guise of a pop culture character. I've often considered this in my own tradition with some of the Digimon based on the Lemmageddon or deities. Whatever the case may be, these spirits have the ability to make real world effects and bring to fruition the, the magician's desires. Whether that's a psychological occurrence, demons dressed up as Superman, or beings from another dimension, you can't deny the worth of this work in action. I want to put a call out to you, the viewer watching this, and ask for your opinion. Are the spirits real, or is this all in your head? Let me know your paradigm in the comments below, and tell me what experiences you've had that led you to this understanding. As always, I hope this video was informative, or at the very least entertaining, and as all good YouTubers will tell you, you need to subscribe and hit the bell button below if you want to keep up with my content. I hope you're well.